Top Doc? Hey, Top Doc. What are you doing out here in nature? I'm just walking home from work. Cool. What about you with your binoculars? I'm looking for ticks. Ticks? Yeah. I heard you can get, like, Lyme disease from them. So I've got to keep my eyes out for them. Well, it is a possibility, and it's also important to check your pets when you take them out in nature because they can also get Lyme disease from ticks. Really? Whoa. Have you found any ticks yet? No. I don't even know what a tick looks like. I don't even know what Lyme disease is. Oh, I have a colleague that c can show you some ticks, so why don't we check if he's still in his office? Oh, Come wicked. follow me. So this is Dr. Gerald Auer, who's the chief vet here in the province of Alberta. Hi, Top Vet. Top Doc says you have ticks. Well, I have some in a jar I can show you. Here are some specimens that we found on some dogs and some other animals. Totally gross. I didn't know they were so huge. Well, these ones are what we call engorged with blood. They've actually had a feed from the animal that they were attached to. They're not always this big, but after they've fed, this is how large they get. You have to be careful with these ticks because if you're bitten with one that's infected with Borrelia, that's the bacteria that causes Lyme disease, you could get Lyme disease yourself. Man, so if you get bit by a sick tick, you get sick too? That's right. But how do ticks get infected? Well, uh, Lyme disease is carried by birds and mice, squirrels, and other small rodents. The bacteria is transmitted to the tick and it bites an infected animal, and then later it can transmit the disease to you. The mouth parts of the tick need to be into your skin for oh, a minimum of 18 to 24 hours before it can actually transmit the disease. Ew, mouth part. Well, that's why your best bet is not to get bitten in the first place. Make sure you wear long sleeves, long pants, closed shoes, and a hat. You can also tuck your pants into your socks to prevent the ticks from crawling up your leg. Wearing uh, light colored clothing is also good because you can see the ticks more easily uh, against those type of clothing when you take them off. Also, never forget to uh, wear insect repellent containing DEET because that's very effective and will also protect you against mosquitoes. So, what do you do if you do get bit? You can use tweezers to remove the tick. Here's some examples of some adult ticks. Uh, they're different sizes. They're all adults, but these ones have, uh, they're called engorged. They filled up with blood because they've been on the animal for quite some time. They've had a chance to feed. This is another adult, but it just was found a little bit sooner, so we didn't have that chance. Um, when you're removing them, uh, there's a few things to remember. One is to not to squeeze them, because if you do, you have a chance that if they are infected, you might be injecting some of the bacteria back into your skin and into yourself, so you want to avoid that. But the best thing to do is just to take some tweezers and grab them very close, uh, the mouth parts on the one end, very close to the skin, and just gently uh, squeeze, or gently pull up. Um, we don't want to make sure we don't break off the mouth parts in the skin. We want them to release, and the, the slow, gentle pressure should help do that. So the next thing you want to do is put the tick in a plastic bag that can be sealed, put it in the fridge in case we need it later on for testing. Then what you would do is wash your skin uh, carefully with soap and water and watch it over the next couple of weeks to see if you develop a rash. If you do, it's time to go see a physician and don't forget to bring the tick with you. So you get a rash if you got Lyme disease? Well, a rash would normally be the first sign of having been infected. And the rash would grow gradually into a bullseye shape. And you can start experiencing other symptoms such as um, fever, headache, chronic fatigue, and uh, en enlarged lymph nodes. And if you get any of those, you really have to go see a physician because if it's left untreated longer, you can get into severe neurological or other uh, severe illness such as meningitis, chronic arthritis, and heart disease. Man, that sounds bad. I don't even know what half those words mean. In Alberta, the highest risk of finding these ticks uh, is in late spring, early summer, kind of May through August when the ticks are most active. You can find them in the countryside, in the forest, in the grassland, parkland areas. But you can also find them in the cities too, in parks, in 
ravines, and even in your backyard. We don't have a lot of these ticks. They're actually, the ticks that carry Lyme disease are rare, but uh, we're trying to get a better understanding of just where they are and, and how many there are out there. Thanks, Top Docs. I feel like I know so much more about ticks and Lyme disease now. Well, I sure hope so. I can't wait to tell my cousin about this. Now when we go outside in the summer, I know what to do so we don't get ticked off. <laughs>